Okay, perfect. So welcome to Food Code Snippet number one. Today is all about refillable reusables. So again, in Washington, we, this is a relatively new adoption that we um, had with our, our food rule. So historically, refillable reusables could only be refilled inside of a food establishment if they were supplied by the food establishment and washed by the food establishment, or if they were washed and cleaned and filled at a food processing plant. So not a food establishment, but a wholesale facility that was actually washing the, the food um, container and then filling it with uh, food for later. However, with our um, food code change that we did back in 2018 to 2000, or 2020, we actually made quite a few modifications, and that's what we're here to talk about today. So the code section that we're we referring to is 246-215-03348, and it has primarily three options for um, refill and reusable containers owned by consumers. And this is the key point, is these are containers that are owned by consumers. So this is not the tray that is reused such as in schools. This is not um, maybe the third party that brings a container in that is refilled by the, um, by the customer, but then it's taken off site, washed, rinsed and sanitized and then returned. The, um, key, the key options for consumers to bring their own containers in. The first one is if they have water, uh, vending machines. So sometimes you'll see people bring containers in and it, it doesn't matter what container they're bringing in, they can fill it at a water vending machine. Um, the next one, the other option would be the establishment provides a reusable clean container. So this would maybe be like the, the tray that we discussed where it's a school, they provide the tray, um, the individual, the, the consumer fills it and then they return the tray and the tray is washed, rinsed and sanitized and then returned. So there's no restrictions on the consumer there. But option two, <clears throat> is where the consumer um, brings their own beverage container. So this one, they have a maybe a cup that they bring in and they can refill it with a, a beverage, both with um, non-TCS, so these are foods that don't need refrigeration for safety, so that's something like a soft drink, um, but it could also include TCS foods. So these are foods that we call time temperature control for safety, can include something like milk, something that actually does need to have um, refrigeration for safety. So they, uh, a consumer can bring in their own cup, this is a, an option, and they can refill it as long as the the refilling is a contamination free. So an example of this would be if they take their container and, and fill it up with a, a soft drink machine where the, the liquid actually just flows into the cup when it's activated by a lever. You don't have to actually contaminate the bulk food supply. Now our third option, and the one that we're gonna talk about the most is uh, opt in. So this is only if the business wants to opt in and actually provide additional options for the consumers to refill their products or refill their containers. This is opt in, so it's not required. We had quite a few comments during our revision process from consumers that were like, make it a requirement. It is not a requirement in Washington state. It is an option for operators. And it really does need to be considered under their available capacity. Capacity. And the way we're going to evaluate capacity is by uh, creating an approved plan. So again, option three is for a business that wants to allow additional ways for consumers to fill their containers other than the first two that we mentioned. And it has to be under an approved plan. Um, and these, each time the consumer needs to provide a visibly clean container, the consumer may fill the container using a contamination free process, which we'll cover in a second. And these are for non ready to eat bulk food packaged or non TCS ready to eat foods <clears throat> if it's in a gravity flow system, which we'll cover in a second. And then also um, the third option or the third. Uh, component of option uh, three would be that the employee may fill with any food. So again, we'll cover each of these um, options that people have or businesses have. So what is a contamination free process? A contamination free process is a method that ensures the transfer of food to consumers reuse container that will not cause contamination, whether it's biological, physical or chemical to the original food or beverage. And that's the really key component. You will see that this term is not defined in the food code. However, we use the um, general dictionary definition. So again, whenever we're talking about allowing a consumer to bring in their own container, we need to think about a contamination free process. So we want to make Make sure that the original food or beverage or food contact surfaces are not going to be contaminated by this this container that comes in. 
Okay, so again, the whole gist of uh, our session today is really to look at the Active Managerial Control Toolkit documents. So we're really going to cover these in depth uh, throughout the rest of the session. And I saw a question earlier about where do we get these documents? So they're available on our website. If you go to doh.wa.gov slash food rules, you will see a section on Active Managerial Control Materials. These are all available, um, again, on the website. They are currently posted in English. However, they are also um, have been translated into Chinese, Korean, Spanish, and Vietnamese. So we have additional languages as well. And those will also be posted as soon as we can get them um, so that they can be verified for the accuracy of the translation. So again, on our website, we have all of these documents that you can download, or you can also reach out to your local health department for the materials. I also want to emphasize that these are created in Word. So if you, if you have access to Word, you can modify them even more than just a fillable form. So this is a high level um, modification. This is probably isn't something unless you own the, the, the software, but there is a, a developer tab on, um, you can download specifically for Word if you're familiar how to use Word. And then if you um, open up the developer tab, you can unselect or, you know, uh, select the restrict editing, and then you'll be able to edit the document more. If you have questions about how to actually edit these documents, if you want to manipulate them in Word and you have capacity using the developer tab, please feel free to, to reach out to us. In general, though, we do hope that the documents are able to be used by you just with a fillable form and just click and go. That's the, the intention of using the documents are to um, just make it easy for you to actually look at your procedures, evaluate your capacity, and then you can um, either keep the materials internally or if you plan to opt in to the program and, and actually provide uh, additional options for refilling of consumer owned containers, then you'll be able to submit this as part of your plan into to your local health department. So each of the toolkit documents are two pages. They again are available on our website. We just covered that. This is the front page of the uh, toolkit document for refilling of consumer owned containers. I wanna kind of give a high level look at these real quick so that we can just kind of give you a little bit of a walk, walk through. Um, really want to emphasize that there are a lot of options on the document that are actually approved now. If you're able to do them now, it, you do not need a separate plan. So as you're starting to look at your options to reduce the disposable containers inside your food establishment, then you may use um, several options in general. So section three includes all of the um, current options that you have for allowing refillable reusables. Again, section three is are the ones that do not need the separate plan. All right, so these are the basic refilling options that you have. Um, we've covered them briefly at the very beginning. You're allowed to have maybe a third party bring your um, their containers in that they wash, rinse, and sanitize, and then refill at a, a separate um, food processing plant. You're allowed to have consumers refill their own containers at a water vending station. Again, you're allowed to have consumers bring their own beverage containers as long as it's a contamination-free uh, dispensing system. You're also allowed to have your food establishment take the consumer's container, wash, rinse, and sanitize it, and then provide it back to the, the consumer for them to fill. While these don't require an improved plan, we do encourage you to notify your health uh, department if you are going to take advantage of any of these options. Now, the real focus of this document is actually on section two, which is, uh, again, those three options that we covered at the very beginning. So option one is non-ready to eat, bulk foods. Option two, these are gonna progressively get um, where they need more capacity. Option two is ready to eat food in protective dispensers. And then again, option three is ready to eat food in open containers. And this is going to require the employee, the actual food worker to have quite a bit more of a role. The document continues. We do require <clears throat> we do require that um, you submit a, a plan if you are going to go through one of the ex extended options. So, a portion of your plan is going to need to have consumer education. So, consumer education can be poster that's uh, put up on on the the area, maybe some stickers, something along the lines that employ or customers have been notified about what they can refill and um, what kind of options they need to make sure their containers come in clean. Also, you need to indicate what type of containers that you're going to allow. So consumers potentially might want to bring in glass. They might want to bring in a single use container, such as a reclosable zipper bag. You have to be really clear about what kind of containers you're going to allow so that all of your employees and all your customers are, are familiar with what you're, you're going to have.
have inside your facility. It's going to continue on the back. So this is the page two of the document. Um, real key components here are to make sure that you have employee training to prevent contamination potential, evaluate processes to make sure they have good hand washing and good hygienic process, uh, practices whenever they handle uh, consumer owned containers. Also look for monitoring and corrective actions, areas where you're going to look for risk and make sure they get corrected going forward. Again, you really want to emphasize employee training, making sure that you're doing it on a regular basis so that everyone's aware if you go through these expanded options. Now let's focus on though these key um, portions of the plan. So you're going to, we're gonna cover each of these options um, uh, with the control measures that you need to have. So option one again was non ready to eat bulk foods such as dry rice, uncooked pasta, uncooked beans. Uh, these are your bulk foods traditionally. These have to um, make sure that you have consumers are, um, or or your staff ensure that the container is visibly uh, clean. So that's gonna be a really key component. You wanna make sure that your consumers bring in clean uh, utensils. Your staff can either also make sure that it's clean. It's, it's your option whether or not you wanna have staff actually do the, the visible verification. <clears throat> you can also rely on your customers as long as they've been informed of what they're supposed to bring in. So again, this one should be relatively low risk because these are non-ready to eat bulk foods. And so these are things that are gonna actually be cooked off uh, at, their, at their home as well. Let's look at option two a little bit. Option two again was the ready to eat food in protective dispensers. So think gravity flow. So this is traditionally the granola, maybe honey, maybe spices where you can't contaminate the bulk foods. You can shake it into your other container or you can pull a chute and it will drop food into the into your original container or your um, to go to container. So option two, the key is to protect the bulk supply of ready to eat foods. Now, this one, the control measures that you need to have is again making sure that the containers are visibly clean, making sure that the dispensing containers uh, are um, protective of accidental contamination. So again, you're going to want to make sure that you're using the gravity flow pieces of equipment. Also make sure that food workers regularly sanitize at least daily uh, touch surfaces. Uh, that's a pretty standard uh, practice that people are doing now after COVID. And then again, make sure staff are trained. Okay, let's look at option three. Option three is uh, the ready to eat food in open containers. So this is something like a salad bar or a deli case or something along those lines where you have open containers of ready to eat food that might also be time temperature control for safety foods, foods that you have to keep um, actually refrigerated as well. This is the most advanced control that we would have. So again, these are gonna be facilities that actually you have to make sure that the employee, the food worker is the one that does the refilling. So unless you're going to wash, rinse and sanitize the container before the customer takes the container to the salad bar and refills, then you would, um, your staff would have to actually do the, the filling of the, the food item into the consumer's container. So example would be if a consumer wanted to bring their container and refill it with like a deli salad or maybe deli meat, then the employee would then ha handle that container and then they would be the ones to fill it so that they didn't contaminate the bulk food with the utensil or with any of the um, <clears throat> container. And so if an employee were to, you have to figure out how to prevent the contamination from the container onto your food contact surface, as well as your employees' hands. So for example, some facilities, if they take a cup from um, an individual, they will put the cup into a, a secondary container that the employee only touches the outside of the secondary container. They never touch the consumer's uh, cup. Or if you're going to refill maybe a, a person's um, dish with a deli meat, then you would actually weigh the deli meat on a disposable wrap and then you would place that inside of the consumer's container. And that way you don't have to handle a consumer's container at all. So again, option three, you really have to be careful to protect the potential contamination of food contact surfaces and the worker's hands. So you can tell each of these go in increasing needs for capacity and demands on staff and, and capacity to actually control the potential risk of contamination. Okay, so again, we just wanted to highlight the key components of our toolkit document. 
really wanted to emphasize that there are several refilling options already available without an additional plan. Um, again, that's when you have foods that are refilled in a processing plant. So you'll see those now. There are quite a few third-party partners that will actually take a container, they will have a kiosk and you can return the container and then it gets uh, recycled and reused at a processing plant and redistributed. Again, consumers can bring their own container for water vending stations. Consumers can bring their own cups for beverage refilling, whether it's a non-TCS, so like a soft drink or TCS, which means again, something that has to be kept refrigerated or, or hot for safety, such as a milk. They can refill their own uh, beverage containers as long as it's a contamination free process or again it's current now they can wash a uh, food establishment can actually wash the the container before the customer uses it and they can refill it that way however we do have new expanded refilling options consumer owned containers that is opt-in so again this is uh, based on the food establishment they can evaluate their capacity to determine if they want to opt in if they decide they want to opt in then they can allow customer owned containers with an approved plan and again they have to be have the capacity to be contamination free um, so this would be non-ready to eat, traditionally bulk foods, packaged foods, or option one that has the lowest barrier to entry. Option two is going to require a little bit of an equipment upgrade potentially where they have ready to eat foods and they're going to use a gravity flow or shoot delivery system. And then option three is where they have quite a bit of capacity needs because there's going to be quite a bit of food worker involvement. So again, this is going to be open foods. So think things like your deli counter, they would... Um, Take the, the consumer would take their container to the deli counter and then uh, the employee would fill it there. So again, key points, if you want to opt in, you're going to have to review your capacity and determine which option that you have ability to do. You're going to have to complete the plan and get the plan approved by your local health department. You got to prepare signage and um, educational materials, both for staff, but then also customers. Train your employees and customers so that they are familiar with your system and then keep monitoring and approve it. Okay, so I see we've had quite a bit of um, conversation here. So what products would be refilled at a food processing plant? <clears throat> so quite a few uh, facilities are doing it now. So for example, it, sometimes it's regional where you'll have a company and um, that I think Loop is one of the, the bigger ones and one that's got quite a few novel processes going around. And I know they recently did some trials in the Pacific Northwest. But what, what they'll do is they'll partner with a food business and they will potentially do ice cream. They could do um, personal hygiene products. They could do a wide variety of products. Um, they, can, they can do you know, bags of uh, chips, um, they, but they have a lot of different things that they can actually work with that uh, major producer and they will get the, the collection unit, uh, so a kiosk where they will have these um, stations where people will then go purchase the product in the, a reusable container. They will consume the product and then they'll return the container that gets returned back to the food processing center where it gets washed and sanitized and then it gets refilled. We have um, uh, similar kind of situations going on here where they'll, they'll recycle the actual utensil, the, the container, but they won't fill it with food, but they will reuse the container and then provide it back to the actual food establishment for them to fill on, on premises. So Lisa, a lot of different products can actually be refilled at a, a processing uh, plant. Um, and I see Emily actually added some language. So yes, wholesale coffee roasters. I've seen it with ice cream. I've seen it with um, some soups are done that way. I've seen salads done that way. I've seen quite a few different things that can actually be refilled into a container that is done at a processing plant. So the processing plant language is, is from the code. However, we mean facilities that aren't a food establishment. So it's not a retail location. It's a location that's more wholesale. So they don't generally work with customers one-on-one. -on -one. They will work with the business instead. Uh, so what is the procedure for food that is placed in a container and someone changes their mind? Will there be a garbage can nearby to dispose of the already dispensed foods? So that's a really good question, uh, Jennifer, and yes. So once the food goes into the consumer's container, if they change their mind, that food is now uh, wasted. It is now um, no longer able to be turned back to the um, actual food uh, establishment for, for reuse or, or for donation even. And that's similar to what we have in general. So once we provide a food to a customer and they take ownership of it, it's not to return back to the actual distribution either. Will you cover coffee cup refills into consumer containers? Rhonda, would you be willing to explain a little bit more about some of your question there? 
you can either put it in the chat or go off of mute. Yeah, I was I was just curious. You know, there was I've I've heard that Starbucks plans to go to all refillables mm -hmm. for the most part um, here in the near future. I've also heard they're redoing the way they're going to make their coffee from grinding to putting the coffee out. I haven't seen it myself in action. I think there are people on here from Starbucks, which would be helpful. But you know, you see people pass their cup in and their cup comes back, and I'm wondering what happens in the meantime. So Becky's on here and I, I know she's um, been a pretty active partner uh, historically on this topic. So I don't know if Becky, if you want to, oh, it's like you've already gone off mute. You wanna explain a little bit yeah. about what you've got? Yeah, I put some stuff in chat also. So we do have an internal process where the um, employees are not to touch the item, the tumbler or the or the uh, coffee cup. And it's it goes in a special vessel right now we're using kind of a, a larger coffee mug <laughs> or a different vessel if that doesn't fit and then that gets sl that slides down and we only touch that vessel and use that to make the beverage um, and pour the beverage in and then push that back to the customer we are um, of course always looking for ways to help sustainability and um, we do have a test where we have reusable cups that a customer would get and then they put into a bin. Those are handled by a third party to wash, rinse and sanitize and the whole process is vetted um, in the local health departments where we're doing that test. We haven't rolled that out further. We're just, we're still in test. But of course, we're, you know, our company and other companies are looking, what can we do to, for sustainability for the future? Um, but we always will keep food safety top of mind when we do that and make sure that we bring everyone along with the process um, of what we're what we want to achieve with that um, and then as far as coffee brewing setting out that is not something we're doing <laughs> um, so we are looking at different ways of brewing coffee but that's behind the line and it wouldn't be customer focused okay perfect thank you very much becky appreciate that um, so yes you know Becky's talking about the sustainability options that they're working on with, with her brand. However, this is something that a lot of agencies are looking at, whether it's inside of Washington or outside of Washington. We see a lot of municipalities that are reducing the amount of disposables that we can we can actually generate. So we're trying to ad address it through the solid waste. So this will this will be an option that continues to keep becoming, um, as Becky said, top of mind, because again, while a lot of facilities now use disposables or they have other options, we do see that the, the concerns that we have for solid waste are going to start limiting how many disposable options that people are going to have and businesses are included. And then there's a lot of consumer pressure as well to make sure that they are able, you know, a lot of consumers don't want to necessarily bring in a, a single use product into their homes or in, and they want to reduce their waste as much as possible as well. So again, even if it's something that maybe people aren't looking at right now, we do think there's going to be continued pressure to keep reducing our, our um, solid waste footprint. Um, so Cynthia is asking about what level of staff monitoring for option one would be required to ensure consumer containers are clean. Would signage directed at consumers be sufficient or would staff need to be able to visually monitor the refilling areas at all times? So no, for option one, um, California and Washington um, put the onus on the consumer, especially for option one. Well, it should be relatively low at risk because again, these are non ready to eat bulk food items. So the, the product should be able to then be, um, you know, the contamination potential should be low because they're going to then take the food product, uh, the ingredients home and actually cook or, or do some other process to make them safe. So for option one, it would be the, the consumer would be, um, advised to bring in a clean container. Now, staff could then, if they were to oversee it and say, wait a second, this container is not uh, actually clean or this container isn't um, what we're going to accept in our business, they could override it. But in general, no, they would not have to have active monitoring if that's what the um, food establishment determines to do. Uh, Christine, uh, so how would we monitor guests stay in a hotel that decide they do not want food and put it back in the chafing dish? So this is interesting to me, Christine. I don't know if you want to talk about this at all. If you do, please feel free to go off of chat, but I will attempt to answer. So it's, um, I think it's the same with what we have in, in general, where you have maybe a, a salad bar or a serving line, a just a, a um, 
a open food in general where you walk along and you dish your your food into the onto your plate right so the code currently requires that every single time you make a new visit to the salad bar or to the the station that you actually use a clean clean plate so it'd be similar here so this is an example where if it's like a a um a consumer going into a hotel and they're getting something out of a shaping dish, they should go directly onto the plate that's provided by the hotel or the napkin or whatever that they picked up along the hotel. And then they could take that directly into and put that into their um, to go box, right? They should not be taking their to go box along the, the self service line and start filling their container. All right, again, that would only be the employee could be doing that. So to be clear, the the consumer should not bring their to-go container that has not been washed by the food establishment. They should not take their uh, uh, to-go container and take it along a serving bar, whether it's a chafing dish or a salad bar or any kind of self-service and just fill it automatically. All right, that's where our cutoff is. They aren't, they aren't able to do that. They aren't allowed to do that. And again, there, this is gonna be quite a bit of a education um, kind of emphasis, right? So we haven't had a lot of experience with this yet in Washington. We did work on this. This was our number one comment generator during the Roy Vision process. It was, um, we, we received well over 400 comments about it, all encouraging. And we had a few that um, discouraged and said no, uh, not to adopt. However, the vast majority were very, very keen on adopting this. However, that was around the time that we also had COVID. And so there were a lot of restrictions put in. And I think people are just now returning back to, to routine service. So we actually don't have a lot of experience with this um, and the actual rollout and implementation. We have seen quite a few businesses, in particular grocery stores, that are changing equipment over to gravity flow and you know, to reduce the potential for contamination of the, the bulk foods. So we've definitely seen that. Um, but again, this will be something that we continue to roll and, and, and learn from. I will also mention that Oregon is in the process of adopting language very similar to what we have in Washington and in California. So we do envision that the pretty much the whole West Coast is going to have this as a potential option. Again, in our state, it's, it's definitely an opt-in. Um, but we do think that there's going to be some consumer pressure to um, make sure that you know, they have the ability to do it. <clears throat> So really want to encourage businesses to, to match the capacity that they have. So that's why we have those three options that all stagger based on the capacity that they um, want to dedicate to the refilling process. Uh, let's see. So we have a question here about on a soft serve buffet, a guest wanted only one hard boiled egg that was in a two part package. So they took one egg out and put the other egg in a package back in the cold holding device. Would the egg that was left need to be thrown out? Um, so it's wasteful, but yes, once a, once, a, once a package is opened by a consumer, <clears throat> that package is theirs. Um, so ideally then the, the worker that's there at the self-serve buffet um, would be the one to actually open it and then find a way to, to either rewrap the egg or something along those lines. But yes, a person should take whatever's inside the package and not return the partial package back to the uh, food establishment, unfortunately. Okay, again, so really want to encourage you to hopefully you'll take an opportunity to look at the active managerial control materials that we have. Again, if you want to help us, especially with um, the uh, translated documents, we will get those posted as soon as we can make sure the translations were accurate. But if you would like to help us with that, please do reach out. You can also reach out to your local health department. You can see that we have on our website, doh.wa.gov slash food safety contact. We'll connect you with your, your local health contacts. Cindy, thank you for putting in our email. You can email us um, at, our, at our email address and then one of us will reply back to you and, and help you as much as possible as we go through this. Again, really want to emphasize that this uh, refillable reusables is very specific to opt in. Uh, we have a lot of facilities that were doing refillable reusables even before COVID and, and before the code changed. And so I want to make sure that um, you all have capacity and able to do that safely. So again, really want to thank you all for joining us today. And um, this was even faster than I kind of pictured, but appreciate several of the questions that we had. Please do look at the material, see if you have follow-up questions. We'll be happy to connect you or answer um, anything that you have, especially as you start trying to implement this. 
Um, we are also going to be working on some materials to support it so that they're customer facing. So if you have any questions, we've been working with a few uh, groceries and, and other operators to, to work on some materials that you can actually use uh, actually at the food establishment to help train your co consumers in particular customer. Um, but anything that we can do to help you uh, actually adopt this and, and go forward. Again, you're going to I think see quite a bit of changes with our state and, and local municipalities where they're starting to really restrict the availability of uh, single use or disposable pieces of um, utensils. So really wanna make sure you're all prepared. Again, thank you very much. Thank you, Becky and everyone that uh, contributed and uh, spoke today. Hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. Again, this one was our lightest one. Uh, this one's all opt-in. As we keep going further, we're going to start actually having things that are going to be required as well. So please, please join us tomorrow. They'll be quick. Um, come prepared with your questions. Hopefully you can look at the AMC toolkit documents as well and uh, ask us any questions that you have. Have a wonderful day, everybody.